thank you for joining us in this.
Testing, testing. Testing. Good night to everyone. Are you glad to be here? Are you ready to sing? Because tonight we're really going to lift our voices and our praises to the one that's on high. Is that all right? Okay, so before we start, I want us to stand and have a word of prayer. Eternal, most loving and adorable Father, we are indeed thankful that we can be found in your house of worship. We thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us throughout the day thus far. And oh, oh God, we thank you for bringing us here safely. We pray that you will bring those who are on their way here safely too. And may we enjoy a sitting at thy feet. And whatsoever is said and done, will may, may it be a means of drawing us closer to you and closer to each other. Forgive us where we've wronged in word, in thought, and in deed. Empty us of all the things that's unlike you and give us a character like you are God. Bless us and make us a blessing. For Jesus Christ's sake, tune our voices now as we sing to thy name, honor, and glory. For Christ's sake, amen. Amen. Our first song will be number 251, He Lives. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living whatever men may Correct. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. Hallelujah. He lives. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today.
going to move on to number 373. This is a favorite in all congregations in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Seeking the Lost, number 373. Now we want to hear all the parts, all the females, all the males. Come sing with me. <laughs> Seeking the lost, yes, kindly entreating, wanderers on the mountain of strength, come unto me, his message repeating, words of the master speaking today, going afar. The land for sinners seeking the lost and pointing to Jesus, so that are weak and hearts that are sore, leading and forth in ways of salvation. Jesus the Lamb, Jesus the Lamb, for sinners Thus I would go, thus I would go. So we go on to Marvelous Grace, number 109. Okay, let's see. Yes, Marvelous Grace of our loving Lord, grace that our seeds are sin and our guilt. Isn't that amazing that God gives us his wonderful grace? 
even though we do not deserve any of it. But he gives us anyway, okay? Because we're all God's children and he loves us. Amen. Continuing, good evening. Um, those of us who can stand, could we stand for a prayer, please? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes as we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your most holy, matchless name. Loving Lord, we greet you in the name of the Son Jesus, who died that we might have access to eternal life. And we want to say to you this evening, Lord, that we are happy that we can come here to your sanctuary to be worshiping you in a country where there's no radical persecution. Glory be to your name. But we recognize, however, one day it will change. So help us to take advantage of the present situation and come to your sanctuary whenever the doors are open so that we can worship you. We recognize you as the Almighty God, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Sovereign God. There's none like you. You are God and God alone. We want to thank you for the blessing of life. You woke us up this morning. You traveled with us today wherever we went, and you brought us safely here tonight. We give you praise and thanks. We thank you for all those who are here, our visitors, not as many as last night. Nonetheless, we're grateful to have them along with our other um, church members. We pray that you will journey with those who are still on the way and bring them safely. As we come before you, Lord, we humble ourselves, realizing that of ourselves we can do nothing. We therefore bring before you those who are unwell and pray for healing 
for them in accordance to your will. Not only physically, but mentally and more so spiritually. We want to bring our pastor, Pastor Terence Haynes, before you as he comes to the podium in a little while to present your word to your children. We ask so God um, that you will bless him, that the words that come from his mouth may be your words, and will be delivered in such a way that we can not only understand them, but apply them to our lives. Those of us who do not know you, we pray that something he says will unpack on them, Lord, so that they may come to know you and to call you blessed. Those of us who already know you, we ask the Lord that we would, under the influence of your Holy Spirit, commit our lives to you once again. So as we come before you again, we stand in awe in your presence as we worship at your feet. And we thank you once again in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Good night. Now I know it's cold outside, but I still need you to say a brilliant good night. It's warm in here, so good night again. Thank you. Now I like to, my task tonight is to say, welcome. So I'm welcoming you, 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 up there and even online. So can you turn to the person next to you and say, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Okay, so our opening hymn will be 457. I love to tell the story of of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longing as nothing else. the story I love to tell a story more wonderful it seems than all the golden fancies of all the golden dreams I love to tell a story Sit 
Church of Salvation from God's unholy word. That's why we love, I love to tell the story. Tell me like me in the love to tell the old, old story, church. to tell the story for those who know it best. I, I love, love to tell the story for those who know it best. Seen hungry and thirsting to seated. Good night, everyone. Good night. It's good to be in the house of God. Amen? Amen. And the song is so true. I just love to tell the story of what Jesus has done for us. Amen? Amen. He, listen, he has been a good God. Amen. To God be the glory. Tonight, I just want to share a few th things with you in terms of what's happening for the remainder of this week. First of all, do we have any new guests with us tonight? Anyone came here for the very first time? Any Ah, come on, put your hands like one, two, three. Ushers, the gifts, the gifts, the gifts. The gifts, ushers, the gifts. You know, we give the gifts, we give the wine, we give the book. All of our new guests will receive, please stand as you will receive your special gift for coming by tonight. All of our first timers tonight, first time guests, please stand, please stand. Our, our guests will give you, our, 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 our ushers will give you uh, just a token of our appreciation for your presence with us this evening. All right. And while that is being done, I'll share with you our topic for tonight. Can anyone re be... Um, kind enough to tell me what was announced as the topic for tonight. Huh? Back to basics, yes. Back to basics. That's the topic for tonight. And uh, um, we trust that you'll be blessed in the process. All right. And tomorrow night's topic is entitled, Playing by the Rules. Playing by the rules. Congratulations once again. Thanks for coming. And may God richly bless you as you enjoy the service tonight. And for those of you who are viewing online, we welcome you to our service. And we trust that you too will receive a rich blessing um, tuning in with us this evening. So to tomorrow night's topic, play playing by the rules. Tonight we're going to be having a special prayer session praying for needs, special needs. I can tell you that whatever the needs, whatever the situation, God has the solution. Amen. Amen. And tonight we will present our needs to God. The song says, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry not some things but everything to God in prayer. That's what we're going to be doing in just a few moments from now. And also, tonight we'll be having our quiz. The quiz will be done verbally. As of tomorrow night, you'll receive a, a um, pencil and a, a, a piece of 
paper to put the answers on, but tonight you'll hear them verbally and you can give your response. And also tonight we'll be having a health nugget and the health nugget will be done um, by video. So may God richly bless you as we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. At this time we'll have our, our quiz for this moment. Good night, everyone. Oh, dear. Somebody that I know. Good night, student. <laughs> I will be your quiz master for the next three weeks. Well, mistress. I'll be your quiz mistress for the next three weeks. Each night, you will be given five questions. The person or persons who amass the most points will be given a token at the end of each week. So remember, you must be here each night. And to our online viewers, you can take part as well. Now, tonight's questions will be cool, just like the cool, refreshing showers we experienced today, okay? Here is question number one. And let's put our hands up if we have the correct answer. The title of last night's presentation was Great Expectations, True or False? The titles of last night's presentation was Great Expectations. Yes, sir. Very good. Let's give him a, a round of applause. Number two, parents should discourage their children. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. He's correct as well. The little one shall leave them. Question number three. According to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God made man in his image. True or false? True. Yes, please. Thank you. True. Number four, only one person has an entitlement to God. Only one person has an entitlement to God. Yes, ma'am. False. Give her a round of applause. The little ones are leading out. And our last question, God only does the minimum for us. God only does the minimum for us. True or false? False. Give yourselves a round of applause. All is tonight. So please listen attentively tomorrow night. Sorry, please listen attentively tonight so you can answer the questions for tomorrow night. God bless. present our needs before Heavenly Father. And I wish that you would just bow with me or you may kneel as you so choose. Whatever posture is convenient for you, we want to invite you at this time to let us pray to our Heavenly Father. Let us pray. Eternal, gracious Father, we are so grateful that we are here because of your mercies, because of your compassions that do not fail. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us and to cleanse us as we approach your throne. And we trust that with your grace freely offered to us, we may now intercede and beseech you on these various needs that we want to present before you tonight. Whether, the Lord, in, in this edifice or wherever this meeting is being viewed, 
we want to present all your children before you. We present them because in many ways, there are various needs to be met. We thank you, Father, that you are in every way our present help in the time of need. And so we pray that you so minister to those who even know who may be not well. Maybe the high blood pressure, diabetes, perhaps even cancer, or any other illness that might be afflicting the body of one or two or some of your children. We present these before you. We present also those needs that pertain to the economic needs, those things that we must obtain in life in order for us to live a satisfactory and a life that is pleasing to you. We pray, O oh God, that even in our families, where there might be divisions and situations where broken homes are the order of the day, we ask you, Lord, that you will heal and restore the relationships in those homes, wherever they may be. We ask you that in every way, Lord, as you know each and every one of us according to our needs, you will so minister, and that you will do so to your name's honor and glory, and in according to your will is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, at this time, we'll have our health nugget by video. If you buy a new digital camera, it comes with a manufacturer's warranty and an instruction manual. The instruction manual tells you how the camera operates and under what conditions it is to be used. If you do not follow the conditions of use as specified in the instruction manual, you nullify the manufacturer's warranty. You and I come with a manufacturer's warranty and an instruction manual. The original manufacturer's warranty was for eternal life, and the instruction manual is found in the Bible. The conditions of use are found in Revelation 22 and verse 14. It says, blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. We unfortunately nullified our eternal life manufacturer's warranty by not following the conditions of use found in the Bible. In our case, thankfully, the manufacturer himself paid the penalty for our not following the conditions of use. And he offers us a brand new eternal life manufacturer's warranty on condition that we accept his new warranty and follow the conditions of use, which he himself will help us to do. In Philippians 2, 12 and 13, we read, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. When we take a look at the instruction manual, the Bible, we find principles for the optimal function of our bodies. Genesis chapters one through three teach us not only about creation, but about a number of these principles which we can use to stand for wellness. Water, exercise, live temperately, love, nutrition, environment, sunshine, thought life, air, nature, dress, sufficient rest, and simple trust in God. In the next Health Nuggets, we will explore in more depth the principles which stand for wellness, principles from our instruction manual, the Bible. God bless you abundantly as you learn to stand for wellness. Good night again, everyone. 
We will all be blessed with a high of special music by Sister Kovac Harewood. Okay, Sister Corbett doesn't seem to be here at this time. We will now take the evening's offering. Can we ask the ushers to get their positions, please? Okay, before we take the offertory, let us just bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, everything you made is good. You said in your word, Lord, that the beasts of the forest are yours, and the cattle on a thousand hills are yours. And Father, we recognize that we are merely stewards. We want to thank you, Lord, for your divine providence, for food, for clothing, for shelter. And Father, tonight we want to come and bring our gifts to you with grateful hearts because you have given us your greatest gift, which is the, of your son, Jesus Christ, on Calvary's cross to die for our sins. And so, Lord, we bring our gifts with a grateful heart. We pray that you will accept them, and may they go to the furtherance of your kingdom, Lord. May they go to bless many other persons. And persons tonight, Lord, will not only give of their monetary gifts, but they would also give their hearts to you. So these and all other mercies we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We're now going to sing this theme song, Victory in Jesus. So you want to hear some life in this song? Has God begun to you? Because God is good? And all the time? Amen. Victory in Jesus.
Let's go. I heard an old old story how a savior came from glory, how he gave. in flub and you know i want to say good night to everybody we're going to go right into our fellowship song there is much to do and so time is flying but i want to acknowledge the fact that in spite of the heavy showers you came yes. so for that reason i can't give you no shabby no less we're going to give god to do the best so we're going to cue the screen right from the top we're going to do our fellowship song. We're going to sing it once, and then we're going to do the actions. Are you with me? We're going to do it once, and then we do the action. So the first half is just to get familiar with the words. And, 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 and let me just see the hand quickly. Who is the first time here tonight? Tonight is your first time. There is no shyness tonight. So raise that hand. Tonight is your first time. Amen. Amen. Good. So we got to preach even better. But I'll let the Holy Spirit take control. So put it on the screen, channel four. My technicians, you just queue it up. And we are ready to go. Here we go. So, and, and for the song technicians, you're going to do the transitions. I might get carried away when we get to the sermon I'll control. So let's go. New life in Christ. Engineers, you're ready? Musicians, you're ready? Or you want me to start first? I'll start. All right. Da -da. Here we go. New life in Christ, abundant and free. What glory shine, what joys are mine, what wondrous blessings I see. My path with his sin, my suffering and strife. Forever gone, there's a bright new dawn, for in Christ I have found new life. You 
song in the choir. Now let's do the actions. Reach across the aisle. Hold the hand of somebody. Let's get close. There's no COVID distancing protocol, so you don't have to worry. And hey, friends, you're going to do I need somebody to come up top. I got to get somebody from the choir. I can't do it by myself. Who can I grab? Mr. Reader, you come with me. Yesterday I had my buddy Pastor Hall, the president, and now I have you. Uh, there you go. You can't get away. Uh, and we're going to do it. When we start, we're going to move to the right. So your right hand. So you're going to move. Toof. Uh, are you with me? Here we go. Ready to go. And now we go. New life in Christ, abundant and free. What glory shine, what joys are mine, what wondrous blessing I see. We're going to go and join somebody. My path with is sin. I'll put you back. My suffering and strife forever gone. There's a bright new dawn for in Christ I have found new life. Amen. You can be seated. You can be seated. So when you come, we're going to do that. And, and it's a mark of the crusades, the campaigns I've done. You know, we get too stiff. One thing I love about Barbados, we used to be a community. What do you say? Now tonight, before I go any further, I have the most important guest here tonight. May I tell you how it run them say, you know, say, may I have a talk about royalty in the house, them. And that is my mother is here. She's here tonight. And she promised me she would come. And she's here. Glad you made it. Love you too. Thank you. But she didn't come alone. She brought her best friend. Amen. Amen. Just stand and give them a wave. Stand and give them a wave. And remind them your name. Noreen. All right, we have another Noreen. Do, 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 pops. You can't get away. Right. So tonight, best guest. No, every guest is special, but the one who gave you life is more special. Did you get that? And, and that's important for me in many, many reasons. So we're going to go to our message tonight. What's the title of the message? Back to the basics. Back to basics. Back to basics. And I'm going to give you a little joke. Uh, a, little, a, little, a little something strange. Now, la tonight, as I was getting ready, I said we're going back to basics. The most basic and precious of things is gold. Did you get that? So I pull up my gold tie, and I put it on. And to my surprise, when I got here, all the ushers were in gold. And the crusade team was in gold. I said, wait, they planned that thing, you know, say. But that's all right. That's how the spirit moves. We don't have to ask what he's up to. He's just going to impress all minds the same way. But before I get into the word, I want to ask the Holy Spirit to use me. I know there are viewers. I didn't check the amount of persons viewing thus far. But, but I know they're here. What, what's the count, Pastor? You, you, you usually keep the count. We don't find out. But for those online, good night. And, and I have my cousin. She is there. And, and her cousins from Canada are watching. And we say good night in Jesus' name. So I got to behave myself, you know. You know, watching me all over. And I got to say the right thing. No, I'm just going to say what God tells me to say. Yeah. So let's bow our heads as we ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us, speak to us. And, and presto, presto, we let the Lord do the rest. Not I, but Christ. Lord, your people sit. I kneel, yet we all are waiting. Not I, but Christ, Lord. I'm a sinner saved by grace through faith. But yet, Lord, tonight, one more time, we need your presence. I need your anointing. I need your infilling. Not I, but Christ, Lord. We've seen you work in the past. Not just yesterday, but even further back. We look forward for you to work in the future. But just about now, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' precious name, let Amen. the church say, Amen. Amen. Well, tonight I got myself a reader. A reader. Not, not because I couldn't read or I wasn't working well. Uh, uh, but, but I just said, let me try something different. 
I, I like to interact with the word, and, and the word is living. When you read it, you hear God's voice. You hear him speaking to your heart. That's why if there's nothing else you can trust, it's the word. word. Did you bring your Bible with you? Yeah. And if it's on your device, you can wave the device. Give the devil a headache, they say. Oh, I like to bring the, 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 the printed stuff too. Sometimes the device runs out of charge. All right. So, so here we go into the message. There we are. Now, now as introduction, the, the, somebody asked the question, what is wrong with this world? And, and I'm not going to lie to you. Of late, at the ending of 2023, the beginning of 2024, and just a few days ago, I got a text message from my friend, fellow student, in Haiti, and he just texted. It was rare of him. He doesn't usually complain about what's happening in Haiti. Hello now. But he texts and says, colleagues, please pray for us in Haiti. I didn't watch the TV because it was kind of on Sabbath at another time. But friends, when I checked in, I discovered that a gang of a former policemen and, and bandits tried to take out the prime minister, hello now, of Haiti. You didn't get that? And let me give you a secret. The Prime Minister of Haiti is a relative of our world church leader. Yeah, so that one came close to home. And, and he was not in the island, but he escaped. And, and, and people were running out of, the, of, of Port-au-Prince because a large portion of the city was controlled by these gangs. And I asked myself, what is going wrong with the earth? You listen to, to all kind of stuff in the news, and it has to be something. Either the devil gone mad or we gone mad or both. But you know, they say art imitates life, or maybe life imitates art. And, 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 and in 1979, hello now, a, a, a young man writing the words uh, 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 to, written for him, because he wasn't the original singer. The man is Lou Rawls. He wrote a song. You know him. What's the matter with the world? Has the world gone mad? Nothing's wrong with the world. It's just the people that's in it, in it. You don't know the song. Mm. You're too pure. All right. But some of you can go home tonight and you Google it. And you get this song. And he wrote about it. And, and what touched me is that that was since 1979. I'm not going to tell you how old he was. Mm. Some of you weren't born. <laughs> I know that. But he wasn't alone because in 1992, a group called For Him, four guys singing a cappella, but they put together a song and said, Get him back to basics. Hello, no. And, and listen to the lyrics. We need to get back to the basics of life a heart that is pure and a love that is blind. I, I, you're talking about my, my apologies. I didn't even put far the screen. I ain't reading it. You can join me in reading it. Some of you know it. A faith, a faith that, is that is fervently what? Grounded in Christ. Grounded in Christ. The hope, the that, hope that what? For all times. These are These the what? are the basics. We need, we need to, to do to what? get back to the basics of life. Anybody agree with them? Oh, yeah. Anybody need that we need to get back to the basics of life? Uh, I, I, I could say a lot more. Just that one phrase is a whole sermon. But friends, this evening, we want to jump straight into the Word of God. We want to take a time trip back into space and time and go back to when God put all those formally together, E equals MC squared and grammar, da 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 pa pa poo poo push, push, push. And go right where it all began. And I want to look at some important factors in that beginning episode to see what is special for us and see if we can figure out what's going wrong with the world. Hello now. This is your captain speaking. We're about to take a space trip. We ask you to buckle your seatbelt. Don't get up from your seat. Just open your word. This is not a recording. Here we go. Here we go. The sound effects. The kids like it. There you go. So, gets back a bit. So, when you read Genesis 1, uh, the first thing, and Genesis 2, there's some important stuff that jumps out at us. 
Let's see. Uh, we can't read it. That's a take-home assignment. So when you get home tonight or tomorrow during the day in preparation for tomorrow, you can review in detail. Remember what I said last night. For those who are new, walk with your pen or paper and take the text down. Check out the preacher. Make sure he ain't pulling a quick one on you. Are you with me? So Genesis 1 and 2. We're not going to read it tonight, but I want to pull out some big themes, and then we're going to delve a little bit deeper. Number one, it says there, God created and did what? Reorganize the world in six literal days. Now I can hear somebody say, reorganize, Pastor? But yeah. But look at it. It says, the Spirit of the Lord moved over the face of the deep, and it was darkness. Hello, no. And then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And then he said, the evening of the morning was the first day. And, and then he says, let's separate the water. Right. Did it say he made the water? But the water was there. Yeah. I believe he did make it. But the question is, did he make it on the creation week or not? The Bible doesn't say, and I'm not going to argue on that. And then he made, after the separation, he made the firmament. And then after that, he made the dry land to appear. Mm -hmm. Did you get that? Let, let's understand it. The, the water was under the, uh, above the land. Did you get that? The, the water was above the land. That is, when he says separation, the land peered out, the water stepped back. And he called the land earth. earth. And he called the water sea. We call it that. But no, since creation till now, except for rare moments, the sea comes to the shore and stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And go back out. Did you get that? Amen. Every time I want to doubt creation, every time I go to the beach and watch the sea coming up, big, big wave surfing and doing all that, there, the tunnel and everything, and ducking on the, as much as the big wave is, when it gets to the shore, it just comes right up and goes back out. That is God still in action. But that's not the only way I can know that creation is real. Anybody here does landscaping? Anybody here cut grass? I don't get, I, I give you a big term, but let me say, you just go on the weed whackers and cut in. You know, uh, uh, when God made the, the, the vegetation day number three, before he even made the sun, moon, and stars, hello now, he said, let the earth bring forth vegetation. Eat as dry as it is, when a little water sprinkle, what does grow? Grass. And if you don't cut it in, tell me like a bush. And every time I see the grass spring back after, they come and cut my, my, my lawn and everything. I said, God is still in charge. Amen. That's why the psalmist says, he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. So when every day the, the people talk about God and making this or God and make that. When I see the grass grow back, I said, take that. <laughs> because God spoke and it was done. Oh, but it didn't stop there. What else did, did we, can, we can glean? It says, what, what came, came before, before did what? provision for what came next. No, I didn't understand that, but watch this. Before God made the birds, he had a sky. Right. Imagine the birds trying to fly through the water. <laughs> before God planted the, the fish and, and, the, and the marine animals, he had a? Did you get that? Yes. Before God made the, the crawling animals and all the animals, he had? Land. Ay, ay, ay. You get in the picture. What next did he do, preacher? I pass you, always pressing the wrong button. There you go. He, he what? God spoke the creation into existence during the six days. Can you imagine that? God just say, let there be light. And light appeared. E equals MC squared. It took Einstein years later. To figure that out. He just simply said, let there be light. Boom, and it appeared. He, he, he spoke and there was animals. And if you ever did a level biology, when you do anatomy, you take down those animals and look at the different tissues and organs and cells, you can see the speaking power of God is powerful. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he just said, let there be, you know. Ah, but what something different now? What something different? Hear what it says there. It says what? God did not speak humanity into existence, ah. but uniquely made the first ah. pair. Now me feel special, no say. 
I tell people I'm not a sheep. You know, there was a song years ago. Me, 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 me. I'm not a sheep anymore. Me, me, me. You, you laughing, but it's a real song. Somebody like to know this song. And we laugh at this song, but I like this song because the song is saying, we ain't following. I thank God for Sir Errol Walton Barrow. He says we are a satellites of none. You going quiet. And a DP or anything else. But here's the thing. When God made us, as the old people say, he break the mold. Even identical twins are not identical. Not only that, but we are special. So when I watch my young boys wearing all the underwear, oh, nasty. You get in the minivan and sit down and they see all the underwear, oh, and they go sit down there, boy, bring the, the sanitizer. I train licks and the people because we follow stupid habits and we ain't got a reason. Hello? I, I put licks on the boys, now I gotta put the licks on the girls. Sometimes I, I watch the listen, wait, something looking different with she. When I look at it, I see him personal eyebrows. Poof, poof, poof. I can't call them uh, eyelashes, them is eyebrows up there. Poof, poof, poof. Not only that, but, but like, I want to be real with you today. I don't understand. God bless you with some good hair strands. You can scrape off everything clean and then take a pencil and draw it in. And I ask them, why are you doing that? I don't know. You ain't no idiot. You are no idiot. God has made you not by speaking you into being, but he got down. It says, he took a hundred pounds of clay and made my life worth living. Hello now. Pastor, you know all the old songs you like to do is good cue in the community. Shh. But God stooped down and he held down and he shaped out man. Not just a hundred pounds for a woman to become a man, but he made man and he breathed. And man got up, and I said, praise God, we Amen. are special. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm saying to my young people, you don't have to got a gun in your pocket to it to feel special. You ain't get that. You might hear me try a little Jamaican accent just to keep a little difference and catch your opinion. Some of you don't want to hear it until they talk like that. But we are specially made. Amen. I can come back to it. Let me see what next there. It says what? God created the seventh day by resting. Imagine that. We just go and make things by working. Go and make something by chilling. <laughs> you ain't get that. You ain't get that. Let me read and come again, yo. Let me say it a different way. I'm saying we just go sweat to make things come on earth. We go do hard stuff to make it. But my God just pulls up a double, a double blank. No, a double blank. I like that. You can tie the game by putting a double blind. Box, nothing from the cars, and block the game. And he say, I rest in Sabbath day. Amen. That's the God I serve. That's creation. And imagine that, you know, some Christians say, it's just an allegory. It's just a story. Well, you believe what you want. Believe I respect you. But I take in the word of God just where it say. Amen. Do I have a witness? Yes. Amen. I ain't here to tell God we do it, just say amen, leave it so. But it didn't stop there. Let's, let's dig down a little deeper. No, it says the first what? The first complete day for humanity was a day of rest. You didn't get that. Pastor, how you know that? The word of God tells me the last thing that God made on day number six was humanity. Mm -hmm. Because after he made man, he says in the evening and the morning was the sixth day. And the next day that came on, the first complete day for the human family was not a day of work. Now that is so important because I am sure if Adam and Eve had done something on day number seven and then God rest, I am sure they said, but God, I do a part of this, you know, you can't kick me out the garden, you know, for real, then I help build that, you know, they go, they, 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 they. What God is trying to say is, listen, I am large and in charge. I am your father. Amen. Everything you need, I will provide. I saw this on TikTok. I like to give credit where it's from. 
a lady was saying, you know, everything you, that, that you, you, you have, it, you, what comes before, you, it, you depend on it. So, so the, the birds depend on the air. The, the creeping animals depend on the land. And then it says man depends on God. When man separates from God, he doesn't exist anymore. He falls apart. And I said, what's she saying? Let me see if it's theology in that. And there's a truth in it, you know. Because for you to have the birds, remember I tell you, you needed the heavens. For you to get the fish and the, and the other you swimming the mammals, seas. you had the sea. Yeah. And before God made man, he says, our image is present. Amen. You missed that. That's a good point. So let me bunk again. Let me bunk again. Now, regarding humanity, watch some stuff. God extended his kingdom to earth and made the first pair as his managers, his we, stewards. What do you mean by extend his kingdom? Now watch this. In the Lord's prayer, it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. But watch this. When God created the earth, he was now expanding his presence and reign. But instead of saying, I can run things from here, you say, you know what? Adam and Eve, I'm putting you in charge of this planet. How I know that? He says, you see all the creeping things? The birds? You will manage them. Yeah. Know what he did not say. He didn't say you can control each other. So this thing called slavery is from the devil. It is. This thing called people trafficking is from the devil. Yes, it is. This thing called gentrification, we're using your social status to push out others and take away the property. That's from the devil. From the devil. This concept of entitlement, because I get put in the oven a little half a second shorter than somebody else, you'll figure that out. I gotta be careful I step on this thing because it's going around the world. I'm saying just because you get an umbrella all through your life and the sun ain't make you dark like me, don't give you no entitlement. Oh, yes. You don't get that? Yes. Well, let me see. I get passionate with these things and I feel it in my skin. I feel it in my skin. And don't think because you got a few letters behind your name that can't even spell something that you brighter than anybody. Somebody say it this way. Don't let anybody box brain and be smarter than you. Mm. You don't get that? Yeah. What am I saying? Because you got some old money on the bank that, that they ain't even giving you an interest fund or you drive on a Beamer or a Benz yes. and they got a walk with P2. Do not make you better than me. As a matter of fact, all of us are children of God. All of us have value. Yeah. All of us, hell no. Amen. Amen. Shame on you if you criticize your fellow man. Yes. I asked Michael Jackson, where are you? In the grave, the moon walker. Doom, doom, doom. The moon ran out in the grave. I asked Whitney Houston, where are you? Oh, I want to love somebody. I want to feel the heat with somebody. Where are you now in the grave? Dawkins, that scientist, bright guy, yeah. criticized the existence of God. Yeah. Where is he now? In the grave. And I have learned, no matter who you are, where you got, where you earn, where you gain, you're going one place, the grave. Yes. Word. And that's why I say we all need a new life. Amen. Amen. That's why getting back to basics tonight. But let's move on, Pastor. The time running, having fun. What does it say there else? A few firsts were established at creation. So watch this. You saying boats always coming first and getting gold. But before he did running, God already ran. <laughs> Amen. So what did God run and do? Watch some first now. First place. Marriage and family. So watch this. Marriage is not a human construct. When you look at marriage, God fingerprints, torn prints, and every print on it. Amen. And God designs who should get married, how should get married. <laughs> Got that right, preacher? Hello. Well, can I stop that one? I've got to go again. What else? The Sabbath. So God says, I'm making a day by chilling. And God says, the seventh day is my day. No matter what we try, it's still his day. We can come back to that later too. What else is another first? Work. Now here, it's a Barrett and Levy, everybody must have work. Work, work. <laughs> you know about him. 
But you know what? Word is not a punishment. You didn't get that. Because when God made Adam and Eve, he placed them in a garden to walk. To work. He says to take care and to shape the vines and the garden and care for it. So when I see the young man cutting the corner up on the side of the road, even though they're leaving the mess, I prefer that than the thief in my coconuts. Then. Sometimes I see men selling plant plants, the dung and tongue. And it's a boss, man. They're trying to raise some money from a child, man. Buy a plant. Yeah, or give me a donation. I buy one. You know why? Because honest work is honorable work. Amen. Amen. And sometimes I don't buy myself. Give it to the next body. Just hold the contribution. Amen. Because work is of God. Yes. That's why so many young people get in trouble because they're following God's plan. They want to sit on the block and talk on the block and then thief my money on the night. Hello, no. That is not the kind of work God created. Nope. But what else, Pastor? Now, some key, key things. Key characteristics are defined. Now, reader, I need you to read this text slowly. If it didn't walk with it, I want you to read this text. Genesis 1, 26 to 28. I want to delve a little bit deeper in this thing. You got to see this here. What does it say there, reader? I'm going to follow you slowly. And God said, mm -hmm. let us make man in our image mm -hmm. after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, mm -hmm. and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Mm -hmm. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female mm. created he them First and god one. blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth Let's, let's look at some important stuff. Number one, man's identity is in God. Amen. The value of a human being is the value that God has given us. Have you ever wondered why it is in almost every jurisdiction of planet Earth to murder is wrong? You ever wondered why that? Even in the bush with the, Ab with the native Indians and, and natives, you kill somebody, they'll kill you because they know it is. Wrong. In sophisticated countries, to kill somebody is. Wrong. Because our identity and our value is God. Did you get that? Yes. Next one that, that comes out of that text is that our gender, gender and, sexuality. and sexuality. And I need to stress this. Because God made man first. But then he made Eve next. No lesser value. But I like to put it this way. God took the masculinity from his divinity and placed it in Adam. Boom. Yes. The anatomy, the physiology, and the ability of a man is designed for that purpose he's called man to do. And then he says, all right, hello. I let him see that he needs a partner. And then he made Eve. And then when he made Eve, he took the feminine qualities of God out of himself and pops into Eve. Amen. Now you just get a headache when it's a God take the feminine qualities out of God. I see it on your face. But you know, God identifies with females. He says, how would I gather you like a hen, gather of her chicks? Amen. Hello. He says, they that dwell in the secret place of the shadow most of the high Most High shall, shall abide on the shadow of the Almighty. Hello, now that is motherly terms. Yes. When the children got fever, they want a hard chest, daddy. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> There's one mummy, and something about mummy's bosom says it's peace. Amen. Hello. And God took that out of himself and so pops and put it in Eve. But then watch what he did. He says, the man and the woman, he brings them together and the two become one. So 
So two men can't be one. Nope. Can't work. They can be best friends. They can look out for each other. They can care and protect each other. But God's ideal is that man, woman. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You get, you get me? Yes. Sexuality. It isn't a construct of anthropology, which is the study of human beings and, and living in societies. God designed how a man to be. Amen. So God designed that a, a husband should be priest and protector and provider. Amen. So if something happened at night, the woman shouldn't be running. Oh, no, he's out there, then. <laughs> you only do that if you're living alone or daddy's somewhere doing shift work. Neither there's certain, and we might call this European culture, but if you look at our African roots, brother Welch, t tell me if I'm wrong, you can see a clear distinction between the genders and their passage of rights that you can pass to be a man and to be a woman. And when we talk about getting back to our African roots, we go get it right. Somebody's hearing me? But I can't stop. Keep moving, Pastor. What purpose. else? God, God give us purpose. All of us have a purpose. Before there was sin, God made a purpose. He says, I make you in my image, and you are reflecting me, and that you are to manage this earth and take care of it. You are to this earth as I, God, to you. Amen. Did you get that? That's why fathers, the best husband your daughter will get starts with you being a father. Amen. Amen. Boys, the best wife you will get is when mommy is being the best wife to daddy. Amen. You go about the place and backbite daddy and cuss him behind him back. Who you expect the children to do? They're going to follow your lead. Yep. So God give a purpose. He says, mommy and daddy, you represent me in the family. Mommy and daddy, that's what I put you to do. But he says, human beings, you are to this earth to manage it like I, God, am managing the universe. That was the plan. What else is, is there? What else? It says what? Need for companionship. So I hear some people say, I need the body in my life. A good way is then. Hey, you lie. Even if you ain't married, you got a best friend. Yep. And if we are, they tell me, I never went to prison only to visit, but they tell me one of the hardest things about prison is the lack of liberty. And isolate, and cons, what? Solitary confinement. Solitary confinement. The, the pain of that is but you're by yourself. You just come up for an hour or half or two hours and you go back by yourself. If you ain't got a strong man, you go crazy. Why? Because we're going against what God says. It is not good that man should be, be alone. So all these men that, hey boy, I need a woman in my life, they ain't good. But wait till you get 80 and, and 85 and 90. You're dead in the house by yourself. All the player you was and everything when you get, oh, you need somebody. Hello, no. It's true. Because God is not a liar. We cannot make him a liar. He said it's not good that you should be uh, alone. Somebody's hearing me. What, what else we can see there? Watch this one. Adam and Eve enjoyed a face-to-face -face relationship Look with God. out. Adam and Eve enjoy face to face. I love this song. Face to face with Christ my Savior. Face to face, what will it be? Aye, aye, aye. Now watch this. I can trust something out. Spoiler alert. Let me see who can remember it. This might be a quiz question. But the essence of heaven is not the streets. Hmm. The essence of heaven is face to face, face with Jesus. Yes. Amen. And watch this. When you have new life in Christ, spoiler alert, I'm going to come back to it. Mm -hmm. When you have new life in Christ, you begin heaven already. Yes. Amen. Amen. I ain't saying no more about that. Yes. You got to come and hear the full message on that topic in Jesus' name. Oh, but watch this. It must have been heaven for Adam and Eve. Imagine just, imagine you ain't got, imagine what God is like. He just did. You ain't got to stress your soul. The animals talking with you and thing. hello, no. I wish I could say, and happily ever after. That is only Walt Disney. 
that is only pixels in uh, Hollywood. But friends, things change. I don't know how long, how short. It certainly was not as going from chapter one to the next, but something changed mm. in that situation. And I want to say to you that change has caused this earth to be what it is. Sin. I believe it's God's honest testimony at the fingers of Moses. We believe that Moses wrote the book of Genesis, and therefore he is narrating under the influence of the Holy Spirit what happened centuries before he even existed. So let's delve in deep. And watch this. In Genesis chapter 3, we are given the account when the change happened. Now, Genesis 2, everything good. Genesis 3, trouble. I do not believe it's just that close. But watch something on the slide. It says the entrance of, of what? Of sin into the human family. No, no, I didn't say the entrance of sins. And the I put all letters sin. in caps. I want to suggest that the problem with the world is not the sins that we do, but the sin, sin. that came. Mm. Do you get the difference? Yes. Let's explain some more. Now, first of all, the story says the serpent, the serpent was more subtle than all other creatures. Now, the word subtle is not a good understanding because of the prejudice we've attached to the word. The Hebrew word for subtle there, it, 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 it talks about arum is the Hebrew word, and it means prudent, crafty, subtle, sensible, and not prudent and sensible. It says of all the creatures that were created, the serpent was the most prudent, careful, and sensible. The attack didn't come from somebody foolish. And I want to suggest to you, it is not the fell up on the street talking and running him out that fool people, but people dressed like me that is fool people. Mm, serious. Serious. And I'm saying to you every night, get your Bible and check me out. Amen. Don't let my charisma and my antics and my fun fool you. I am not afraid to put, on my, put myself under the test because this is not about me. This is about the... The Word of God. Somebody's hearing me. Oh, but watch this. Not only did the serpent, but watch this. Eve came to the serpent. Psst. Every time we hear the fellas say that boy, it's a boy, snakes talking. Girls run. Psst. Young gal says, Young gal, Psst. If you read the Bible, you know once you hear that seek and run, boy. That snake again, that snake again. <laughs> no insult to the boys. They're just pulling your leg. But watch this. The serpent comes to Eve. And he says to her, wait, you can't eat from these things around here? She said, yeah, we can eat from the trees except one. As a matter of fact, you pun it. My version. Ooh. And, and she had knowledge before. Prior knowledge. She didn't come before the tree foolish. As a matter of fact, she added something to the knowledge she had before and told the serpent, we shouldn't even touch it. Because we, we touch it or we, 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 we die. So... Watch this. Having prior knowledge don't protect you. Ooh. Hello. I said yesterday. <laughs> having prior knowledge doesn't protect you. Some of you too young to know what that song effect for. You know the old reels where you press them. <laughs> Maybe only the DJ men do. <laughs> so when you used to say it again, you pull back the rewind button. So I got to give the song effect too. But watch this. Having knowledge about something doesn't protect you. No, it doesn't. I said yesterday that I believe all of you love Jesus. That's why you're here. But I got news for you. Knowing the Bible before you came here doesn't tell you that you know everything. Mm. And you've got to test me out and hear me out too. They're gone quiet. Oh, but watch now. Go in again. I, I see the time, gentlemen. It, it, it says there what? Choice and the will. Now, some people want the freedom. I pass them. They want me right for doing it. This is my mind. I can choose what I want, then. I remember my cousin. If he's watching the screen, I love you. I love you, cuz. Well, one day, look at me and say, I am for the devil. No, I am for the Lord. I just myself. <laughs> I, I didn't want to disrespect him, but here's the truth. 
if you're upon the fence, you're neither upon the devil's side or upon the Lord's side, you're still upon the devil's side because the fence is the devil own. Wow. What do you mean by that? The fence is the devil own. The Lord don't put no fence. He says, come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you Why rest. would I put a fence to block you out? But, but more critically, you are either on the Lord's side or on the devil's side. There is no middle ground. You're either tending to serve God or tending to serve the enemy, but there's no stagnant motion. You ain't get that. We are creatures of habit. What we keep practicing become law in our mind. Oh, but watch this. What else, Pastor? Quickly there, it says what? Your knowledge and relationship with God. So watch this. What was interesting about this is that she had knowledge from God. Eve was made by God, but she didn't know enough about God. You didn't get that. The serpent come and say, listen, you see, God knows I ain't telling you. He know the day you eat from this tree, you're going to become like him, knowing good and evil. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. She didn't have enough knowledge to, to figure it out. And I want to suggest that if she had just waited long enough to say, Adam, come here. This serpent here telling me something that we never hear before. I'm sure things might have been different. It's true. Maybe. I am sure that if Adam and Eve, so wait, 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 snake, hold a minute. You, you, you know, sign, I know, but let me check with God upon this here. Give me the fruit, you tell me. Because God never said the day you touch it, you die. He said the day you eat it, you die. So they could have taken up the fruit and say, God, the serpent tell me if we eat this here, we, can, we, we, if we ain't going to dead. Is this true? I am sure God would have reasoned with them. You didn't get that. Very important. I use him a divine mind. Truth and error. But watch this. I just said, the serpent said, the day you eat it, you shall what? Not surely die. For God knows in the day that you do, you become like him. Really, can you pick up Genesis 3.22? What does it say there? Genesis 3.21-22. What did it say there? And Adam and his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. Pause. What did the serpent say? That when you eat the fruit, you're going to become like God knowing what? Good and evil. What God just said in verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. Was the devil lying about that? No. Was he telling truth about eating the fruit and you die? No, he wasn't. He was not. So watch this. Standard operating procedure from the devil. He never comes with total error. Mm. And he never comes with total with truth. truth. He always mix it. Let me show you something. If I had to say, I'm giving away some cookies tonight. I, I made them with cyanide poison. Just a few drops of cyanide poison. Who wants one? Would you want one? No way. If you know cyanide poison can kill you? No. And that's how the devil works. He will never come and give you total error. Mm. And even when he's telling you the truth, he has a wrong motive. Deceiver. You didn't get that. Some of us just do things, but we said, boy, I can hang out with the boys here for a few minutes and slam some dominoes, and then when they left, they're going to do that there. So when they get home, and she said, where you been? I say, with the boys. And if they pick up the phone and say, he did with you? Yeah, he did with me. And you put on the phone, but here's the thing. You didn't say what else I did. You, you ain't get me. I give you half of the truth to deceive you. It's the same thing with the devil. And it's not aloof to the spiritual things. That's why I tell you the text I take it from, so you can go home and read the entire chapter and see that pastor hands and cut out something and change the meaning. Are you with me? Oh, but it doesn't stop there. What else? It said God's what? God's introductions, her abilities, and intellect. So what's God's this? God's instructions, sorry. So, God's so, instructions, her abilities, 
and intellect. So watch this. God said, don't eat from the tree. But after a while, she says she looked upon the tree and saw that it was good to eat hmm. and to make one wise. I still figuring out how she get that done. <laughs> That's like me looking at somebody, say she'll make me a good wife. And I never met the girl before. I never had a conversation with her. That is my, my daughter bring home a fella. Said, Daddy, I just meet this fella up on the bus. He will make me a good grandfather. Not at all. No, your intellect and your abilities cannot outmatch God's wisdom. Amen. If God said don't do it, don't even do if you can't understand why he says don't do it, trust him. Amen. We don't have to wait till we get the scars then to believe him. Somebody's hearing me. Oh, but I have to fast forward. Weaponized. The devil weaponized Eve. He was counting on the relationship she had with Adam. Mm -hmm. He says, now if I could get her eat the fruit, I am confident I can get her to make Adam eat the fruit because he's the man I want. And I put this out. Some of us are convicted about truth. Some of us read the word of God and hear new life being offered, but we go and depend on somebody's opinion. Ooh. You didn't get that? Yes. Truth is hitting you in the chest. You can hear God speaking to you. You're feeling conviction, but you say, you know what? I got to talk to this body about this thing. Mm. And the devil knows that, so you weaponize your friend. He knows that if you go to a friend, your friend might be convicted, but he ain't want to make certain commitments. So they say, wait, take it easy. That's what the devil still does. He weaponizes certain people to stop us from getting no life in Christ. But I've got news for you. You don't have to let anybody get in your way. You hear God's voice tonight. Run! Follow him. Amen. Let him have all of you. Oh, but what, let's fast forward a bit. Sins lead to sins. Negative so, self-perception. So when they discover their sin, they say, boy, we be naked. They run and hide. But no, in Genesis 2, 25, it says they were naked and not ashamed. But no, in chapter 3, it says they were naked and ashamed. And ashamed. They experienced something they never felt before. And watch this. We can't experience things we never felt before because what? Self-dependent. Self-dependent. That is, instead of waiting for God, the made fig leaves and cover everything. First bikini. You didn't get that. God had to give them fresh clothing. What else? Next one is this. They were distance from God. And you know we're still running from God. Yes, we are. When they heard God's voice in the cool of the evening, instead of saying, Daddy, you come, they gone opposite direction. They ran. I have done funerals, and people flock to the funeral. Some people only come to the graveside. Like if they come in the church and get swallowed up. Why? Because people are still running from God. Hello. Not only that, but what? Negative emotions. They start feeling guilt and shame. What else? The blame game. When God said, but wait, 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 wait. Well, how want a naked and a shame? Adam, what did you do? Well, the woman you give me. She becomes me. He comes to the woman. Eve, what did you do? <laughs> The snake you made. Why? Well, I, I usually put a little joke and say when he comes to the snake, and says, snake, what you do? Um, um, he ain't had nobody to blame. But you know if you listen to that blame game, it ultimately put the blame on God. Yes, yeah. Who made the snake? God. And you know that's always our excuse. Instead of accepting our wrongs, we always say, boy, come up in, in, in the ghetto. My mother and father divorced. I ain't have much schooling. Instead of accepting that is my fault. Hello. Are you with me? We always blame somebody else. And I've got news for you. You can't have new life in Christ until you accept where you are. Yeah. Did you get that? Yes. Because that's what God asked them. Adam, where are you? And that was not a geographical GPS question. That was God saying, do you know where you are? Have you accepted where you do wrong? Oh, but tonight, the time ran, so let me run a little faster. Who was that serpent? Revelation 12 tells me that that serpent was 
Satan. The devil and Satan. Right there on the screen, Revelation 12, 9 tells me that serpent was Satan. You see, the devil came down into the garden and possessed the serpent and used the serpent. Watch this. The devil used the smartest medium he could find. Yes. He still does it. And what is interesting is this. This serpent was known by the prophets. In Ezekiel 28, 13 to 15, we're not going to read it. I, I, I have to run a bit to where you need to end. But watch this. Clearly, it says that you were in the Garden of Eden. Hello now. If you notice that, you were an angel, a covering cherub. Not only that, he says you were perfect until iniquity was found in you. So it tells me God did not make a devil. Did I say it right, Rita? Yes, you're correct. God did not make a devil, but he became a devil. Yeah. And that's important to note because when we look at the problem that this creature caused our first parents to disobey God, we cannot throw a finger in God's face. We got to say the devil did it. And I can hear somebody say, you believe in the devil? You're so, you so educated and so stupid. You believe in the devil? Well, let me ask you, if you believe there's evil around, if you believe this world is unfair, then you are really admitting that something bad is not happening, something good is not happening. And what defines good has to be the lawgiver that says it, there is a better. And if there's somebody who says there is better, then it has to be bigger than us. It has to be God. Hallelujah. You didn't get that. So when you can say, well, how this world so wicked, you are saying there's something that defines what is good. Yeah. You're hearing me now. Oh, but watch this. Isaiah got in the mix too and says, listen, you know what is wrong with this, this creature? He was perfect, but he had ambitions that outstripped what God had for him. Mm. Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. Write it down and read more. And when those things were written, in Ezekiel, it was written under a typology of the king of Tyrus. And when Isaiah wrote it, he was talking to the king of Babylon, but he was talking, these are types of the behavior of Satan who rule them. The dear friends, there's a real creature that is against God. Hmm. And it is him that confused this world. All oh, friends, but watch this. God and his love. Hallelujah. Jesus came to earth and he exposed a little bit more about the devil. In John 8, 44, he says, the devil, you see he? What is he children? He was talking to those who were opposing him. He said, you of the children, you have his ways. And watch this. He was a murderer from the beginning. And he was a liar from the beginning. And if he lie, he's the creator of it. Mm. You didn't get that? Yes, he is. And we saw it when the serpent looked at Eve and said, you shall not surely die. He was telling the truth. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. But he makes truth an error. And he's still doing that today. Oh, friends, but watch this. God is a wonderful God. Making the best of In the spite of the church. mess we go through, God is merciful. Now watch this. Normally we think about God's mercy is only to Adam and Eve. But do you know God was merciful to the serpent too? Now note, the serpent was used by the devil. But God looked at the serpent and said, listen, I am going to cause you to walk on your belly. Which tells me that snakes had feet. And wings. And have some means of getting around the place. I don't know, but some people say they have wings. I went to Egypt last year around this time and I saw some Egyptology and I saw serpents with wings. And I asked myself, how did no serpents had wings? You didn't get that. You didn't get that. And it tells me it might have been known more earlier than now that people believe serpents had wings. But now they don't. And they walk in on the belly. And it tells me, as bad as you are, God still has mercy on you. Hallelujah. Amen. And some of us here, if we look back in our childhood, we know the devil used us. We know we do some bad things. We shame of them when we look back. But God still loves you. Hallelujah. Amen. 
what did he do to Adam and Eve? No, he started with Eve. He said, listen, because you was deceived, listen, he didn't even say what she did. He said, no, you're going to have increased fertility. Hmm. He says, you're going to have pain when you childbear. Oh. You ever hear somebody say childbearing was like that? No pain. Okay. Unless they give you an epidural, <laughs> you just feel pain. That's what you call it, the cramps. Hello, no. And, and fellas, you don't know what I feel like. Little constipation is nothing like that. <laughs> Wanna get what he's saying? Wanna just get that? Move on, Pastor. One time. But watch this. He says, Your desires will be for your husband. I thank God for that. Because yeah. some people say, Boy, one child done with that. I want no more than pains. But you know what? A few weeks later, a few months later, more children. Another one coming. Yep. Why? Because God's words is true. He says, In spite of the pain, you desire your husband. Amen. But watch this. He said, But I'd sadly, and this is something we got to understand. And I hear some sincere Christians say, well, God, God put the man over the woman. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. God did not make Adam to rule over Eve. Correct. When he made them, they were equal. Amen. But because of sin, he says, no, your husband will rule you. So husbands ruling women is not a sign of the new life in Christ. Mm. They go on quiet. Mm. The new life in Christ is that the two are Work equal together. in God's sight. Amen. But what about Adam? Now, what is amazing about Adam is this. Before God told the punishment to Adam, he told the crime. You didn't get that. He says, because you listened to the woman and did not obey me and you eat from the fruit, this will happen. So do you realize who really brought sin to this earth? Not Eve. He didn't say what Eve did. He just said, this is going to happen to you. She got the same approach like the serpent. But when it came to man, he pointed out the problem. He says, because you listened to your wife wow. and disobeyed what I told you and you eat of the fruit, this will happen. You know what God was saying to Adam? Because you brought the first commandment. That is putting God first. Mm. Mm. You put God second. I want to say tonight, nobody you should put above you. Amen. Let me come close, preacher. Can I say this? I'm saying your priest or your rabbi or your pundit can't come before God's no. word. No. I'm saying your husband or your wife cannot come before God's word. I'm saying your mother, I'm a mother here. Your father, God rest in the grave. Your sister or brother cannot come before the word of God. And you see truth in God's word and conviction come home. Don't go to the family and say what you think. Get on your knees and say, God, what you say. Yeah. Somebody hearing me? Yeah. And I know why I'm saying it. Because many a person have been convicted of truth. But they did like Adam and put somebody before. Mm. Oh, but he says, here's the deal. Hard work. But thank God, you can still eat bread. Amen. You didn't get that. He said you can put thorns and thistles. I can make the ground firm. But you know what? You're still going to eat bread. Hallelujah. God is so sweet. Merciful. As Amen. much as there are consequences, God says, I'm still going to give you grace. Oh, but watch it, friends. Both of them got thrown out uh, of, of the garden. Doo -doo -doo. Ah, pressing the wrong thing. There we go. Just advance it for us. Both of them got thrown out the garden. Why? Because it says, lest they come and eat the tree that gives them eternal life and perpetuate sin, I'm going to keep them from it. But note, it never said that God could not bring them back in the garden again. It did not say that they would never eat from the tree again. He just said, for now. Yes. You can't eat from it. You didn't get that. You didn't get that. That's why I know there's no life in Christ. Amen. Because he didn't say, I'm done with that. This thing called humanity, i done with that. He just said, I'm going to block them from coming to the tree. But we know there's hope. Watch there. I'm wrapping up now, Pastor. Wrapping up. When the hope is this. When it came to the serpent, he didn't only say, 
the physical serpent, but he spoke about the real serpent. When it came to him, there was no hope he gave. He said, first, I'm going to put enmity between your seed and her, and her seed. seed. Now, you've read that years and you never saw this. God's children don't have enmity to the sinner. Why? Because God's children love fellow men and desire them to come to their heavenly father. He says, but the problem is now between the devil's seed and God's seed. From, the, from those who are rebelling against God, they won't hear nothing about the word of God. They won't come to church sometimes. Why? Because they think God won't force them into something. But when you see new life in Christ, when you see that God loves you, friend, you won't run from him. Mm. Second one, he says, he will crush your heel. The seed of the woman going to crush your heel. And when I check that terminology, it's war language. You call it decapitation. It's a strategy in war that when you want to put an end to the enemy, you take out the leader. You take out the, 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 the power base. And God says, I am going to take out the power base of the kingdom of darkness. And then the last one, he says, but you're going to get his heel. Heel injury. The body who will do this will not go on scave. He can got the scars, been there, done that, gone through it. So friends, tonight, as I wrap up, I had to run to the end. You felt it, I felt it too. When I go back to basics, here is what the word is telling me tonight. That God did not make this world mess up. When God made this world, it was heaven on earth. When God made this world, his presence with his, his creation. But then a change came. And God didn't do it. Another being did it. But God in his mercy promised that he is going to deal with the issue. Amen. We got to talk about it. Not tonight. Another night coming soon. We're going to go in to this hope that God gave. And tonight, I can hear somebody say, God, I thank you that you are merciful. I have made this world nice. Amen. If it's you, give him a wave offering. Amen. Oh, praise God. Oh, but watch this. I am sure the devil's still battering somebody today. I am sure somebody's still getting stressed from that old serpent, the devil. Hello. And you want to say, Jesus, it's me, it's me. I, 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 I want some protection, Lord. I got some bad habits, won't take me out. But Lord, it's me, I need some reinforcement. If it's you, just give a point your finger, say, it's me, it's me. It's me. You want God to break through in something in your life. Maybe it's health, it's financial. It is family, it's social, something you need the Lord to do for you. You say, it's me, Lord, it's me. Oh, praise God. Maybe you got a friend you want to see him come to Jesus too. You can say, it's me. I put in my fingers. You're following me. You put it one finger. I put in two. You know, you got people. I, I have some friends I love to see give their life to Christ. Get the devil out the business. It's me, Lord. And I know that you're here because you want to be on God's side. So I'm not going to ask you. I'm going to invite you to stand as we close in prayer. Oh, praise God. And I haven't forgotten those online. I know if the rain didn't fall, some of you would have been here. I know if you got a free plane ticket, you would have been here. I know even that you want not to be here, but you want that new life in Christ. So I'm going to pray tonight for every family represented here. Last night we talked about great expectations God has. And tonight we went back to the beginning and we saw that God is desirous to give us the best he could. But somebody did something. 
And tonight we know that old wicked devil. I know what the children say. If I can catch that old devil, I'll put him in the box. And throw away the key. Well, I got news for you. God hear you too. So let's pray. Father, tonight we thank you. We so love you and thank you that when you made this earth, it was the best you could make. You made it so special that every day you came and met with your children. Gave them your identity, their purpose, their work, Lord. Gave them your day. But then, oh, disobedience came. We thank you, God, even in that you are shown to be merciful. The night, Lord, the Spirit impressed me. There's somebody here that the devil wants to make them think, you, you, the Lord can't forgive you. Hypocrite, you. I used you before and I could use you again. But in the name of Jesus, the devil is a liar. We rebuke him. Take your hands off of that person. Oh, Father, tonight you love us. You gave us hope. You said you're going to crush that Satan head. Yeah. Lord, we coming back another night to learn more about what that means. We thank you that you've given us hope. This is our prayer. Thank you for hearing it. Thank you for the hope. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Really, really. Ah, yes. Oh, yes. Amen, church. What an awesome message from our pastor. We're going to be singing the theme song. Can we have those lyrics on the screen, please? I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. Victory in Jesus. And 
some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. to see you again tomorrow night. God bless you. Make sure you shake the preacher's hand before you go. And do have a wonderful evening. God bless you. Have a good night. See you tomorrow night, 7.15. Those of you who are online, join us. Be Thank you for joining us in this, our New Life in Christ evangelistic series. It has been a blessing to have you being with us. And I'm looking forward that you will join us one more time again the next time as we hear this series. God bless you and have a great evening. See you tomorrow.